So this is the most important video I've done to date. And we're going to talk about what is at stake in this next election between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. How this election will not only shape our fate as a nation, but the nations around the world. We're going to take a look at the bigger picture of what's going on in the world right now. Many people get caught up in the short-term implications, but the long-term implications are what nobody is talking about. Henry David Thoreau said this, For every thousand hacking at the, the leaves of evil, there is one striking at the root. Donald Trump is the only thing standing in the way of the global one-world government. Over 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John warned us of this in the book of Revelation. A one-world government with a one-world leader called the Antichrist will emerge. And this is biblical prophecy that is playing out before our very eyes. Now I'm going to play a video from you from the United Nations officials stating just this in a recent interview. He didn't realize that he was being caught on film. And we are about to talk about this one world government, the Antichrist, which we are waiting to see emerged. And all the pieces are being set in place right now. Hi, my name is Joshua Simone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. The ministry is called Torn Curtain. This is because when Jesus died and rose again on the cross, the curtain in the Old Testament temple was torn from top to bottom. We now have a new covenant, a better covenant, and direct access to a relationship with God through Jesus' death and resurrection. So hit the subscribe button. I promise to bring you the best Christian content, and I'm going to go after the tough and controversial subjects. Please help me get to 100K subscribers. 87% of my audience has not subscribed. So Donald Trump must win this election or the world is doomed. We are much closer to a one world government than most people realize. And of course, there are practical reasons that he must win too, the short term implications, like helping to approve this terrible economy with massive inflations and the prices of everything rising. The home ownership becoming totally out of reach because of rising interest rates. The immigration crisis, which is one of the worst domestic failures in American history, as well as we have m multiple nations at war, which could lead us to World War III. So we're in the most dangerous geopolitical situation that we've been in since World War II. And all these things have happened under the biden harrod administration. With the election just a few weeks away, I'm going to be covering a decent amount of politics. And in the past, I've never preached on politics. But when politics start overlapping with biblical prophecy, we must talk about this to get ourselves prepared and to prepare the church for what is to come. As I've stated before, politics should never become more important than the kingdom of God. But we shouldn't ignore politics either, because it shapes the world we live in. And the world and everything in it is fading to dust. But the kingdom of heaven is eternal and will last forever. But this election is the most important election in American history. And since we are the most powerful nation on earth, this will have a major impact on the nations of the world as well. So many people are just ignorant or uninformed about Bible prophecy in the end times, about a one world government emerging and a leader who will rule over the world called the Antichrist. In the beginning, it will lead to peace and prosperity, but in the end, it will lead to total disaster. So country star John Rich wrote a best-selling song this year called Revelation Song, which talks about the end times. And he spoke with Tucker Carlson about all this. And Tucker was completely shocked to find out the real truth from the book of Revelation even though he had finished reading the book of Revelation this year. Let's take a look at that interview. So why is it, um, why is Revelation so hard for people to, to grasp, to read, to understand? So for thousands of years, um, the prophecies in Revelation and Daniel and other places seemed like such science fiction to people. They just couldn't understand how these things were even possible, including my own dad, who's been preaching since he was about 19. He's in his early 70s now. And he said, yeah, John, you know, just never could understand how some of these things were possible. For instance, the mark of the beast. How is it possible, we would all say, 
that you could track every human being in the world and know where they are and how they get their money and where they spend their money. I mean, that's just impossible. And here we sit going, oh no, they're tracking us right now. They know exactly where we spend our money and where we get our money. Because it says you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. You could you could replace the word beast with system. Revelation says that. Oh yeah, without the mark. You won't be able to buy or sell. Unless you bear the mark of the beast. And when you when you go back and look that up in the Hebrew, it's talking about the global power that's in place at that point, the system that is in place. Now we're about to head to the section where Tucker Carlson is totally shocked by more of the details that John Rich provides out of the book of Revelation. What is the what is the beast? The beast is going to be whatever entity, a, a group of nations it speaks of, that will set into motion. We always talk about globalists and the globalist agenda and all these things. It will be a, a globalized stranglehold on the human population that they will know where you spend your money, where you get your money. Reminds me of uh, central bank digital currency. If something like that happens. So I've read, I'm embarrassed this is being recorded. I probably shouldn't admit this. <laughs> I've read Revelation actually. Sure. I tried to understand it um, last year. I didn't realize it said, how did I miss that? It says you can't buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Without the mark, yes, that's right. John correct. on, the Apostle John on some Greek island 2,000 years ago said that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And so, so prior to technology showing up where it's at now in 2024, these things were impossible. Couldn't he, I mean, this, how's that going to happen? That's a pretty specific call though. To Very specific. Yeah, so now all the things that need to exist physically are all here now so that the prophecies that have been laid out could now physically manifest. Now, I don't know if that's going to be today or a hundred years from now or a thousand years from now. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know this is a new era. So when you read Revelation and you read Daniel and you read these other, these other prophecies, it's now doesn't sound like science fiction anymore because we see it every single day. Okay, so please hit the like button if you like what you see so far. I'm sure they're going to try to limit the reach of this video because I'm touching on a very sensitive subject. So it's something small you can do to help get this video out to more people. Hit the like button. So now let's take a look at biblical prophecy that John Rich was talking about in the book of Revelation that shocked Tucker Carlson. This is in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter. So John says, I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads and ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its head. And the beast that what I saw was like a leopard and its feet were like a bear and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. And to its dragon, he gave the power and his throne great authority. So there is rising up a coalition of many nations that are going to come together, that are going to form this one world government. Okay, and in Revelation, at the end of the chapter, verses 11 to 18, we're going to go over just a few more details. This one is titled The Second Beast. And I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all authority of the first beast in its presence, and it makes the earths and its habitants worship the first beast whose moral wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. And by the signs that it had, it allowed to work in the presence of the beast. It deceived those who dwell on the earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. Also, it caused both small, great, rich and poor, free and slave to be marked on the right hand and on the forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for its number is the number of man, and its number is 666. 
So we see here in Revelation 13, a coalition of nations taking power over all the nations on earth, led by this figure, the Antichrist. And the whole world worshipped him and were enamored by his supernatural abilities. He could perform signs and wonders and was even almost killed, yet seemed to survive the incident. And this caused most of the whole world to worship him, saying there is no one like the beast. So no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. So this is predicting in advance this one world government, the Antichrist, and the mark of the beast that will emerge. There are many biblical prophecies that came to pass in great detail. that were stated in the Bible that happened thousands of years before it happened. Now, in this next clip, we're going to take a look at a United Nations official admitting that this is being put in place right now, a one world government, and that Donald Trump is the only thing standing in the way of all this. And they will do anything in their power to stop him because he is a threat to their agenda. So you're going to want to go get into this interview with this United Nations official. He's a legal officer in the treaties department of the UN Department of Legal Affairs. So this is not some low level player. This is a major player at the United Nations with tremendous power. But before we get into that video real quick, this video today was brought to you by Birch Gold, one of your trusted sources in adding gold to your investment portfolios, your IRO and IRAs and 401ks. It's a way that I can find the ministry and offer a, per a product that I personally believe in. And I believe the Lord led me to partner with this company to benefit the church. I am investing in precious metals, gold and silver myself. The world is moving towards digital currencies and cryptocurrencies. I was watching a lot of financial news this week, and it's moving away from the United States dollar. And one way to secure your future is to make sure that you own precious metals like gold and silver. Birch Gold is busier than they've ever been. They have more business. They can't even keep up with it. Why? Because people are realizing a major financial reckoning is coming to the United States financial system. So make sure that all of your investments aren't linked to the United States dollar. Own hard assets like real estate and precious metals. All of the politicians are doing this. Now, all securities do come with risk. I'm not a financial professional. You're responsible to do your due diligence. But the people at Birch Gold will give you a great education on gold so you can make an informed decision. Gold prices have beat the stock market for the last 20 years. So get your free gold kit today from Birch Gold. To find out how to do this, go to birchgold.com backslash torn curtain. That's B-I-R-C-H gold dot com backslash torn curtain. Now let's get into this video with this United Nations official. So 
sales now? I would say for 95% of issues related to international business security, yes. Okay, so that, cl that clip had a lot of music playing in the background, and I don't know if you could hear all of it, so we'll go over some of the details today. This guy from the UN, this official, didn't realize he was being recorded. And so they go over this conversation, and she asked him right off the bat, is globalism one of the goals of the United Nations? And he said, absolutely. And it's a threat to the absolute power of the United States. So as long as the United States is powerful, they're going to have some big problems. So then he goes on to say, one of the defining features of the magma movement is ultra-nationalism. And that is one of the main enemies that they are called that they called the globalist. And he said, I am the definition of a globalist. Okay. So then he goes, one of the objectives of the United Nations is to create an identity of a global citizen. They created the United Nations, which is the closest we will ever get to a kind of one world government. Okay. So right there, he's admitting exactly what they're trying to do that they're trying to form a one-world government and a global citizen, okay? So now you know that uh, he says that the United Nations doesn't have its own army, and she asked, should it? And he said, absolutely, okay? And then she says, I'm not sure that the United Nations as an institution is going to survive a second term by Donald Trump. Okay, so he's admitting that it's exactly, a, Donald Trump is a direct enemy to this one world global economy. So he, she goes on to say that the United States government funds 27% of the United Nations budget. And that's more than anybody else by a long stretch. So we're paying for all of this, by the way, while they're trying to get us to succumb to this one world government. A United Nations without the action of the United States backing it up, he says, is not going to be effective. So now they start to talk about Donald Trump. So the purpose of Donald Trump, he says, is to end the international institutions that somehow level the playing field. So they're trying to put all nations on equal par, and Donald Trump is standing in the way. It's a movement that's deeply nationalistic. He's talking about the MAGA crowd. And it's America first, make America great again. America, 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 he says. I don't get this, okay? I This is just deeply puzzling because I don't see any problem with having direct pride in your nation, praying for your nation, um, and putting your nation first. At the same time, I think we could have care and compassion for other nations too as well, and we can help some people as we get an opportunity. But it seems to be like recently in the United States that the idea of becoming nationalistic and loving your country is a big problem. Why? Because it goes against the direction of this one world government. So this reporter asked him, so does the United States not want him, meaning Donald Trump? And he goes, no, I mean, we're terrified. We're totally terrified of this guy. So is the international vibe at the United States that no one wants Trump? Absolutely. Nobody wants Trump. So is the UN useless now? She asked the last question. And I would, and he answers, I would say for 95% of related issues to international peace and security, yes, it's useless. So this guy is admitting here that his own organization doesn't bring about much peace and security throughout the world, and in some ways is a useless organization. But they have one goal, a one-world government, a one-world economy, and America is standing in the way. So they want this one-world government. They want to create this identity of a global citizen. The United States is funding all of this, and Donald Trump is standing in their way. I think he realizes that we're paying a majority of the share of the United Nations and other nations aren't picking, picking up the, the tab. They're not paying the bill. But in order for this to happen, the United States must go along with all of this. And this can't happen while Donald Trump is around. Donald Trump sp spoke at when he was president at the United Nations, and you're going to see why they fear him so much. I don't think he said anything that crazy in this video. 
But real quick, so I'm on social media, and I'd love to connect with you on other platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Rumble. I also have an email list so I can stay in contact with you guys in case I get cut off of social media, which I anticipate will happen if I'm talking about subjects like this. Click below in the description of this video for that information. As President of the United States, I will always put America first. Just like you, as the leaders of your countries, will always and should always put your countries first. All responsible leaders have an obligation to serve their own citizens, and the nation state remains the best vehicle for elevating the human condition. But making a better life for our people also requires us to work together in close harmony and unity to create a more safe and peaceful future for all people. The United States will forever be a great friend to the world and especially to its allies. But we can no longer be taken advantage of or enter into a one-sided deal where the United States gets nothing in return. As long as I hold this office, I will defend America's interests above all else. But in fulfilling our obligations to our own nations, we also realize that it's in everyone's interest to seek a future where all nations can be sovereign, prosperous, and secure. Okay, so pretty straightforward. He didn't say anything crazy right there. He seemed to say that basically he wants to put America first, but he was showing sympathy and empathy for the rest of the nations in the world too as well, acknowledging them, but he, saying, but he was a th direct threat to them because of those statements that he is always going to put America first and put our interests first, that all the people and all the nations have to play, pay their own share and chip in in this endeavor. And we should care about the other nations on earth. We should care about other people. That's absolutely. But we don't have to do that at the peril of our own nation. Often in life, we should take the road less traveled, the harder road. The road that most people take is the easy road. Jesus said this in Matthew 7, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction. But those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. So when all the crowd is going one way, we should possibly go the other way. The media is behind Camilla Harris. The media is behind the Democratic Party. The world is behind Camilla Harris. World leaders are screaming for her to be elected again. The Democratic Party wants us to blend into the global community. They want us to be part of a one world government. And in order to do that, they must destroy America first. They must bring America down to its knees. And you're seeing that a lot of what's been done under the Biden and Harris administration seems like nation suicide, opening up our borders and letting millions of people in unvetted, bringing inflation and the cost of everything rising and the geopolitical situations all over the world, how we're getting involved in Ukraine, how we're getting involved in the Israel Hamas conflicts. And the truth is, is all these things are weakening America. All of these policies put in place by Joe, by, by Joe Biden and Camilla Harris. And you almost think to yourself, they're doing this intentionally. They're doing this to intentionally destroy this country. Why aren't people seeing this? Destroying our borders, destroying our nations. And why do you think they're fighting Donald Trump the way that they are? This is a clear sign that he is an anointed one for this generation. Okay, remember, a large majority of the people and political figures and prophets and people in the Bible were completely resisted. The prophets were killed. Jesus was killed. The disciples were killed. And so when you're speaking and there's a lot of resistance, there's a lot of hatred, you can almost say that that's probably the right direction to go in. 
because the way to life is not easy. It's a narrow road. But the masses and the crowds will always choose the path of least resistance. And Donald Trump is suffering because he de does and says some stupid things at times. He makes fun of people. And I can't support a lot of the things he does and says. But also at the same time, I realize he's not a politician. He's a businessman. And he made a decent amount of mistakes in his political career, which led to litigation and lawsuits. And I almost expected this because he's, he's not a politician. He has no experience as a political figure. But no other political figure in United States history has been opposed like Donald Trump. There is nobody that is even close. And some of it is his own fault. And some of it is his character flaws, like having uh, relations with a porn star. But a majority of it is, is because he is busting up the plans of the globalist. He is busting up the plans for this global one world government, this global currency. And Donald Trump is standing in the way saying, no, America first. He had two impeachments. Then they released a virus intentionally after he won the elections. And you'd almost think like, you know exactly which nations did it. They did it systematically. And then you had the Mueller investigation, Russia, Russia, Russia. Then you had several different lawsuits filed related to his tax returns. Then you had several different lawsuits with dozens and dozens of criminal charges. Then he was sued for sexual harassment for a hundred million or sexual assault. And even being sued for $450 million in a fraud trial in New York City, where I'm at. And all of this was an attempt to bankrupt him and put him in jail. And to label him a felon so they could hurt his election chances. And they even tried to take him out last month. And you know what I'm referring to. I can't really say it on YouTube. But they tried to take him out and it was deliberate what they tried to do. Now many people can, can say... I can't vote for a convicted felon, but just remember this, and I'm not comparing Trump to Jesus, but Jesus was a convicted felon who was sentenced to death, yet he was innocent and committed no crimes. And O.J. Simpson was guilty, but yet was declared innocent in a court of law. The legal system doesn't always get things right. It does a majority of the time, but it doesn't always. We have never seen anything like this in United States history, the resistance that Donald Trump is getting, the way that they're fighting him, not only in this nation, but all around the world, they're fighting him for tooth and nail. So I hope I made my case today why Donald Trump is being resisted so hard. He is destroying their plans for a one world government. He is destroying the plans of the United Nations. He is destroying the plans of other nations that want to see America just like every other nation in the world. They want to put America down. They want to take America down because as long as America is in its place, we will not have a one world government. But Donald Trump will put America first. He will fight for Americans. He is a self-made billionaire, and he is no one's puppet. He's not going along with the plans. He's being red pill. He's standing against the system, and that's part of the reason why they hate him. That's part of the reason why there's such vitriol for him. The global order will do anything in their power to stop this man. And I'd be surprised if they let him take this election. I'd be surprised. They're going to throw everything that they possibly can. They already have. He is a threat to destroy their plans for the one world government. So we cannot stop. And I'm just going to say one last thing in closing. We cannot stop the book of Revelation from happening. We can't pray it away. We can't vote our way out of it. This is certainly coming. It's biblical prophecy. But I do believe that we can delay it. And I do believe that God wants to give America one last generation. And this will give us more time to spread the gospel in America throughout the world and prepare the church for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So please, in this election, there's so much at stake. And you see today what exactly their plans are and how Donald Trump is standing in their way. So please see the bigger picture here in this upcoming election. And I know a lot of people do not like his personality. A lot of people do not like the package that he comes in. He's a bit brash and harsh. 
A lot of that is just a New York City personality. I'm from New York City. We're straight to the point, straightforward. Um, we can get combative if you get combative with us. So there are many characteristics about Donald Trump that I don't like myself, but I do like that he's a fighter. I do like that he stands for America and wants to see this nation prosper. And he wants to put America first. And listen, that doesn't mean that we ignore other nations. We can care about them too. But I don't see what the point is, is trying to destroy this nation, trying to put it down. I don't see what the point of that is. I think when America, if it's taken out of the picture, I think the rest of the world is going to descend into chaos. We are a city on a hill, a light on a hill. America keeps a lot of the world safe and in order. Yes, do we have we done some bad things over the years? Yes. Do we need to be in those wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? No. Uh, we have not done everything right. But I tell you the one thing, the world is going to be really really sorry when America sees its decline. And we're seeing that right now. There's so much at stake in the election. Make sure you vote the right way. So please comment down below with your questions and comments or anything that you feel that you want, even if you disagree with me. If you're listening from another country, please state that. I will do my best to reply to some of the first comments that come in on the video. So if you like to support this channel so I can continue to bring you videos like this in the future, you can hit the give button right on YouTube or check the video description to find out how to give a one-time donation via PayPal and Zelle. I'd like to personally just take a minute to thank some of my new monthly partners. I couldn't do it without you guys. I'll be praying for you, and I'm hoping to interact with you more closely. Darlene Morgan, Jay Top, uh, Connie Bumgardner, Donald Kashner, Autumn and Tracy. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'll be praying for you guys specifically. So if you really like the, the content, please consider being a monthly partner on YouTube. You could do that by hitting the join button or go on over to Patreon to Torn Curtains page. Monthly partners will get extra perks. I can interact with you a little bit closer so that I can continue to do this ministry. Without the monthly supporters, I won't be able to do it long term. Thank you so much for watching today. Be blessed. Remember, Christianity is three things. It's to love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul. So take the love that he's given you in your heart and go outward to love other people with the same love God has given you. And then thirdly, is to go into the world to preach the gospel, which is the great commission to Make disciples and baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is to tell them that Jesus Christ died, was buried, rose again, died to set you free from your sins. With his blood, he forgiven your sins so that you can be in right relationship with him, that you can have eternal life, and that God is going to give you his Holy Spirit, give you a purpose in this life. If you have problems and different things, he's going to help you with that, set you free, fill you with the Spirit, set you with purpose, set you with life. He's going to be one of the closest friends that you'll ever have. And we get that all through what Jesus Christ did for us. Thank you. Be blessed.